in this tutorial we are just going to talk about a more and look at uh, how we get to calculate a more how we get to calculate the number of particles be it uh, the number of molecules the number of atoms okay so what is a more a more is basically the amount of a substance of a system that contains as many elementary entities as there are atoms in 12 grams of carbon 12 okay so each time you're talking about a more you're talking about the amount of a substance that contains as many elementary entities as there are atoms in 12 grams of carbon 12 okay so basically that is our formal definition of a more okay so now how do we get to calculate the number of moles so when we look at our periodic table we say we have the relative atomic masses on our periodic table for example if you talk about oxygen it has got a relative atomic mass of uh, something like a uh, 15 point 15.994 right that's what we said and then if you talk about carbon we said it has got 12 point 12.01 right so those are relative atomic masses of oxygen and carbon respectively so the relative atomic mass is going to be referred as the molar mass okay so each time we are determining the number of moles the number of moles is going to be given as the mass divided by the molar mass okay so this formula can change to mass relative molecular mass in a case where you are talking about a molecule it can also be mass over relative formula mass when you are talking about a compound so all the same the mass is always going to be on top okay so if I give you to say determine the number of moles right in let's say two grams of carbon dioxide for the sake of an example so you look at carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is a molecule so you're supposed to determine the relative molecular mass of carbon by adding you know carbon has got 12.01 as its molar mass and it is only and there's only a single carbon in carbon dioxide and then we've got two oxygen atoms which each has got 15.994 right so you get to evaluate the two values so 15.994 times 2 get that 1.988 so you get to add the two to get the relative molecular mass so plus 12.01 so it's something like 43.998 so the units for relative molecular mass or molar mass it's grams per mole so for 3.998 grams per mole this is the molar mass that we found for our carbon dioxide now we are given to say we are at 2 grams right we are at 2 grams of carbon dioxide so how do we get to find the number of moles so what we we'll say is want our more to be on top right so we can exchange this whatever is on top will go down so you basically have a more so you have one more of a carbon or oh, carbon dioxide sorry one more of carbon dioxide there is exactly 43.998 grams multiplying by 2 grams so I'm using dimension analysis to determine the number of moles so in this case the grams will be able to cancel of course we are talking about the grams of carbon dioxide so we'll cancel basically what is canceling are uh, the units grams grams so you end up dividing which takes us to our formula where we are saying our number of moles is mass over molar mass because that's exactly what we are doing our molar mass is this one we are dividing it into what the mass so you get to divide your answer is going to be 
0 0.045 moles of carbon dioxide. So that's how easy it is to calculate the number of moles. Now looking at our interesting examples, how we get to determine the number of atoms and molecules. So how many copper atoms are in 5.00 grams of copper wire? So the interesting fact is uh, each time they want to determine any number, it may be atoms, it may be molecules, we use what we call the Avogadro's number. So the Avogadro's number is a very common number that I believe each one of us has been exposed to. So that's the number. So the units are per mole. What that means is whatever you are dealing with should be per mole. So in this case we are dealing with atoms. So the units of Avogadro's constant will be atoms per what? Per mole. If we were dealing with molecules, the units were going to be molecules per mole. So it is flexible. That is what the Avogadro's number is. But more is always going to be there. Now in this case, I want us to determine the number of copper atoms that are in 5 grams of copper wire. So we can clearly see that if we are to find the number of atoms, all we need to do is deal away with the more that is on the bottom. And we can only do that by multiplying by the number of moles. So therefore, we need to find the number of moles of our copper wire. Okay. So how exactly are we going to do that? So let me just create some space. Okay, so we can quickly do that. So our copper has got 63.55 grams per mole as its molar mass. Now I want to find the number of moles. We'll have to write it in another way. So the mole is supposed to be on top, more of copper. And then we put 63.55 grams so that we divide it into the 5.00 grams of copper. So we are dividing the mass of copper by its molar mass so that we get the number of moles of copper. So the grams will go. So 5 divided by 63.55. So approximately I'm getting the number of moles of copper to be 0 0.078678 so those are the moles of copper moles so the moles will basically cancel out so that you remain with a number of what the number of atoms so multiply by the avogadro's number what answer do you expect to get so i'm getting a value of 4.74 times 10 to the power 22 atoms of copper. So that's basically how you get to handle this question. So whether we put molecules, you handle the question the same way. Now, feel free to try out the next question on the bottom. The second question says, a liter of air contains that number of moles. So we've given us the number of moles. What is the mass of the argon in a liter of air? So how do you get to handle this question? They've given you the number of moles. And then they've given you, and then they want you to find the mass of uh, the argon that is contained in that liter. What do you do? So we basically know that the number of moles is given as uh, mass over molar mass. Not so. So we basically use the same principle to get to find our mass. So number of moles is equal to mass over molar mass. So if you decide to make the mass a subject, it will be mass is equal to the product of number of moles times the molar mass. So the number of moles, ladies and gentlemen, has already been given to be 9.2 times 10 to the power negative 4, which is moles. Molar mass, if you check your periodic table, you find that argon has got a molar mass of uh, 39.95 grams per mole. 
So the units are going to cancel out. The moles will cancel out. So that you basically get to remain with uh, you get to remain with the grams on top. So I'm multiplying that by that. So approximately I have 0 0.03675. Four grams. So if we are to leave our answer to two significant figures according to our question, we would consider three and six. Three and six, which would be zero point zero three seven grams. So that's it for this question. And then finally, how many? C4 H10 molecules are contained in 9.213 grams of this compound and how many hydrogen atoms are also contained so feel free to try out this question from what you've learned so far okay so we basically understand that at this point each time we are determining any number of particles it may be molecules it may be atoms we basically get to work with uh, the Avogadro's constant which is 6.022 times 10 to the power 23. In this case, where the units are going to be molecules per mole. Okay. So, we want to multiply by what? The number of moles, of course. So, we'd have to find the relative molecular mass. So, look at C4, H10, right? So, we have 10 hydrogen atoms each has got about 1.008 grams per mole carbon we have got four each has got about 12.01 according to the periodic table so we're trying to find the relative formula mass or the relative molecular mass whatever you can call it so 10 times 1.008 plus 4 times 12.01 so if we get to add the two, we have 58.12 grams per mole. So that's our molar mass. So if we have our molar mass, we should be able to find the number of moles since we have our mass. So we said our number of moles is the mass, which is 9.213, divided by what? Divided by the molar mass. So, more over 58.12 grams. So, we are dividing. So, 9.213 divided by 58.12. Our answer is 0 0.15885 moles. So we have our number of moles. So 0 0.1585 more. Okay, so we are good to go. So we can multiply the number of moles with our Avogadro's constant now to get the number of molecules. So the answer that I'm getting is 9.546 times 10 to the power 23. 22 molecules of what? C4H10. Okay. Now, the second part of the question is very interesting. How many hydrogen atoms? Very, very interesting. Now, you ask yourself, we have this number of molecules of C4H10. Now, in each molecule, of the C4H10. Of course, if you are talking about the C4H10, we are talking about butane. So, wh what exactly do we have there? We have 10 hydrogen atoms in each. Okay? In each molecule, we have 10. So, how about this number of molecules? How many are we going to have? So, we end up multiplying by 10. So, if, if in each more, if in a single molecule, we have 10 hydrogens. How about this number? So it will be multiplied by 10. Which will just be 
9.546 uh, times 10 to the power 23 hydrogen atoms. Okay, so that marks the end of our video. I hope that you've understood the very, very important aspect of a mole and how to determine the number of molecules atoms in each given case.